To continue my series of introduction to FPV, I thought the next topic for conversation would be to talk about the two things that I'm getting asked about most right now, DBI in relation to the gain on antennas for FPV, and secondly to talk about diversity, and particular diversity receivers. So in the next five or six minutes, I'll cover those two topics in, um, in some depth. I'm going to go over it in a way that hopefully is easy to understand but if you search online Wikipedia and other places have a lot more detail if you want to get into the nitty-gritty. My other video which is showing here while I'm talking uh, explains about the different type of FPV aerials available and the differences between them. I will cover a couple uh, in this video just to remind viewers before we talk about diversity but if you haven't watched that one before watching this I'd recommend taking a look just because it kind of explains the difference between um, the whip antennas, the circular polarized patch helical and everything else. So without further ado, let's talk about DBI. Now DBI is something that you see alongside any antenna that you're looking for for FPV or transmission purposes and DBI is a bit of a weird number because it's a logarithmic number which we'll talk about in a sec but it's actually the amount of gain that the antenna produces when compared to a standard isotropic antenna. So an isotropic antenna uh, can never really exist in the real world. You can think of it like a light bulb and everywhere around the light bulb gets an equal amount of light. There's kind of a globe, a sphere of light that comes off it in every direction. In reality that's impossible to make. So the closest that you get for um, an isotropic antenna is uh, the dipole or whip antenna that you tend to see shipped free with a lot of FPV equipment. So Think of that whip antenna as the, the reference for these DBI numbers. Next thing to think about is the fact that um, it allows us really to compare two antennas together with those numbers. So for example, if we have a whip antenna and it gives us one, and then we buy an antenna that gives us uh, three DBI, as you can see on the graph on the right, it gives us twice the power. If we have a DBI of six then that gives us about four times the power so if you're looking at um, buying or combining antennas together then it allows you to compare the two the final thing to think about when we're talking about dbi is the larger the number obviously the more dbi the higher the gain is which means the longer the range with the equipment that you already have the thing to remember though is that dbi is um and gain on an antenna doesn't come free of charge. These antennas aren't powered. The way they get the range is by taking all of that sensitivity in one direction and honing that and narrowing that beam. And the more they narrow the beam, the more range that you have. But rather than being like an uncovered light bulb, it's more like a flashlight where the light comes out of the front and there's nothing or very little to the sides and at the back. So remember that, that if you get a 12 dBi um, antenna, the cone of light or cone of reception will be out the front and be quite narrow compared to something like an omnidirectional spironet or um, circular polarized antenna. Sometimes you'll see the um, DBI bits and pieces as a straight line rather than the graph that we've been looking at. The straight line on the left is looking at what's called a logarithmic scale, if I can say it. Um, and um, that means that this is a lo logarithmic progression, i.e. it's not linear. So what I've done though is we're not going to talk about that. We're going to continue to use the one on the right, which I think is easier to explain and to follow what uh, what we're actually looking at. So let's just look at this graph in a little bit more detail before we move on to diversity. So every three dBi doubles the power, if you want to think of it like that, of the antenna. So if we look here at the point of three 6, 9 and 12 dBi, that every 3 dBi doubles it. So it goes from 2 to 4 to 8 to 16 as you move up the scale in 3 dBi increments. 
So you can see that if you have an antenna that's rated at 3 dBi and you buy one at 6 dBi, you have actually doubled the sensitivity or the gain of that antenna over the one that you already have. Or if you have a 3 dBi antenna now and you buy a, um, a 9 dBi antenna, then what you've done is you haven't tripled the range, you've actually quadrupled it. So you've gone from two times to eight times. So just think of it like that and um, you know just think of it as that logarithmic scale so every 3 dBi doubles the gain. So hopefully that's made sense what we'll do now is we'll talk about our friend diversity. First of all before we run into that let's just talk about a couple of antenna types just to refresh our memory. The first one we'll talk about is our friend the WIP antenna. This is the dipole that we talked about earlier when talking about DBI that's the closest to that um, reference antenna that's used for gain measurement. And it's um, very relatively low gain but it provides a nice circular um, bubble of reception in all directions. So you can fly the craft above you, behind you, left, right, in front, and you'll still get a great signal. The next antenna we'll talk about and just revisit is our friend the helical. Um, helicals have much higher gain. Um, so these guys will have, um, again, rather than being that uncovered light bulb it's more like the flashlight and that beam is coming out the front so you get much farther range because of the higher sensitivity of the antenna but you only get maybe 60 maybe even down to 40 degrees of uh, the sky being covered by that and that is not great as you fly in towards you then you may wander out of that cone of reception so that's what diversity is for. So here's a diversity receiver. It actually has um, two connections on it. Um, one is for one aerial and the other is for the other aerial. And the way it works is that it's listening to both aerials all the time. And the one that's getting the best signal, it puts through to the goggles or the ground station, whatever you're using to view the video. So what that allows you to do is you can put a circular polarized antenna onto one of the um, aerial connections and that will give us a nice good omnidirectional range uh, for the field that we're studying. And on the other side we could put something like a patch or a helical antenna which is a much higher gain but again has that flashlight narrow cone of reception that comes out the front. Now what that means is that when we use a diversity receiver in the field, those two antennas give us some nice effects. The first thing that we get is we get the cone um, coming out the front from the helical or patch antenna that gives us the range and we have a nice bubble of reception around us because the other aerial is covering that omnidirectional area around us. So that means that we can fly in nice and close and as we push the model further away, we can get more distance. Gives us the best of both worlds. Or the other way you can do it with a diversity receiver is if you're only ever going to be flying, say you're stood on a beach and you're only going to be flying um, over the sea within the cove that you're stood in, you can also get that diversity receiver and actually fit two longer range antennas that will give you those two beams of light or reception. And what you can do is you can actually align them on the top of the diversity receiver so that those cones overlap. So what you have is rather than have 40 degrees of the sky covered by the one long range antenna, you actually have nearly 80 degrees because you mount them side by side with a slight difference of angle and that gives you some great coverage for long flights where not only do you want to go far away from you but also you want to travel left to right a decent amount as well. So hopefully that's been useful. We've talked about DBI, we've talked about what it means and um, how you use it to gauge 
the impact to your kit. And we've also talked a little bit about our friend diversity, about why people use it, and the two common ways that you tend to find it configured for both um, close in and longer range flying, and then for longer range flying where you want to cover more of the sky. Thanks for watching. Please comment, subscribe, and if you have any questions, my Help Out channel is available. Happy flying!